Hi, Joanne. Hey, Julie. Well, you're up to a lot. We got a lot going on, but you're going to teach us some really easy ways, right, to put hand lettering onto our scrapbook pages. You bet I am. There's three different kinds of pens that I'm going to show you how to use. The first is a calligraphy pen, okay. which makes a thick and thin line depending which, on how you use it. I was going to say, I find intimidating because it makes that thick and thin line and I'm never sure that I'm using it right. You know what? <laughs> you can just do your handwriting with it. That's what I've done around the border of this page. And all I'm doing is my handwriting. I love that. So you're just using your handwriting and you're taking advantage of the thick and the thinness of the pen that kind of creates that calligraphic look. Exactly. And you know, I also love the background that you created here. This is super easy. I'm going to guess how you made it and you can tell me whether my fortune telling skills are excellent. I'm guessing that you put down a piece of paper to mask it off and then put some watercolor or spray ink or something around the edges. Is that close? Close. Okay. I colored on plastic. Mm -hmm. The paper part was right. I colored on plastic. I misted it. I turned it over, rubbed it, and I got that cool Perfect. edge. Perfect. So many ways to get color, right? Now this is a more traditional mm -hmm. kind of piece and I'm using a broader marker and I'm just going to write the word joy. I love how beautiful this lettering is with the Merry Christmas. And did you do that Our Angel as well? I did the Our Angel on a pre-made label. Very cool idea. So just remember, you don't have to write on plain cardstock or watercolor paper. You can, of course, do lettering on top of labels or lightly patterned paper. Or here you go, right on top of something wildly watercolored. I wildly watercolored, and I like to do some different sizes. So. You know, what I was going to say is I can really see on these big letters you taking advantage of that nib, which is wide and narrow, because if I look at the L that's here, for instance, I can see how that's a narrow line and this is a thick line, and that's all done in a single stroke with the same pen. It is, and that's what makes this so cool. All you have to do... So I noticed that you're switching pens. Uh, is that because it ran out of ink or something? Or? No, because I picked up the wrong size. I wanted a big one, and the pens come in different sizes. And I, I see. And so you like to mix them up. Oh my gosh, I you do. just created a diamond in like one second. I know this is not exciting to you, but it's super exciting to me. That's amazing. You can do all kinds of pen borders and just do your handwriting and keep the pen at a 40 five degree angle and you will get something that looks really cool so that it makes a thin and thick line when you go across. Very cool. So that's that 45 degree angle. Now when you have something beautiful like this, would you build your page around it? Would you cut it out? Like how do you think you would treat that? I was planning to do this on the front of a greeting card and oh, I was actually idea. thinking of cutting it out in a circle and mounting it. That's so, so. cool. Okay, and now you said you have another idea, but this time using something that's more of a brush pen. So yes. it doesn't have that two-sided thing. It only just has like the it one works long, on like pressure. a brush. So writing around a border the way I did with the broad-edged pen. And on this one, I'm, I'm going to write over a wash. And you can either write somebody's name, uh, or Forever and ever is so perfect for a wedding page exactly. or, you know, and in love, engagement. The, um, I'm going to do a tiny brush and we're just going to do bride and groom. Cool. Now, how different does it look depending on the size of the brush? Is that a pressure thing, like how hard I push is how, or is it like a regular paintbrush where like it just, it's thicker, but it's the same exact idea? Pressure makes a huge difference. Okay. So if I were going to do it in this size, Mm -hmm. When I press, when I go oh, up, oh wow! the harder you press, mm -hmm. the wider your line. So that's really interesting, and I know this is going to sound really basic, but I'm just looking at how this eye has a variety of size. Can you do it in sort of super slow motion because you're so fast? Just show me again, you like know, how much pressure are you putting and where are you releasing it? I push mm -hmm. and I release as I go down. Okay, and I can even see that, that going slow motion. versus going fast, you do get a very different look, which is really interesting. And if you use the color stuff, I did this with the same type mm -hmm. of pen. You can write big, you can write small. It's all a matter of pressure. And so I'm going to write the word shine so I get a tone on tone. 
And That's the more a beautiful I press, background. Yes, the more you press, I can see not only are you getting the variety of the size, but actually where you've overlapped and where you've pressed, and you can really see it if we look at this sample that's on white, it's almost like you get a beautiful color variegation, which mm -hmm. I think is so interesting. And of course, the color, uh, does this, ha I guess it probably happens with the black, but we can't see it as well. Exactly. But you can really see it when you start talking about color, which is a cool idea. Now is this, I have a real question for you, is this really your natural handwriting that's this gloriously no. beautiful? this is my calligraphy. I see. And calligraphy is the art of beautiful writing, and this is a pointed brush calligraphy. Mm -hmm. People do it with pointed pen and it's really popular. Very cool. And now I was also going to just mention, by the way, before you take that away, that if we were to take these photos and put them onto our scrapbook page, you know, one of the things that I think is cool is you have this, you don't necessarily need to see it completely. You can cover it up a little. Yes. Okay, cool. I wanted it as a background texture. Exactly. So let me hand you over. This is your journal, right? It's my current walk around journal. And I've taken you through the way I learned lettering. I started out with a broad edged pen and mm -hmm. then I moved to a pressure pen or mm -hmm. a pointed brush and then I switch to a tool that makes a fixed stroke and this is something that I just wrote around the edge of my journal. Okay, so you're just using a regular fine point pen as opposed to like a brush marker or something that exactly. has a chisel tip. It just makes a nice clean line and I'm just doing simple lettering. You're just using your natural handwriting now, right? To go around there and have a well, saying. It's a little bit more than my natural handwriting. I'm just writing some words. But then what I like to do is go back and make it look more interesting by adding weight. And that just means that you're fattening those, right? Right, so I go and I double stroke them. Mm-hmm. And I can see how cool that is. And of course now you're filling in all that um, double stroking, right, but you I didn't double. have to, right? That is true. And if, and if we look at some of your beautiful finished samples, starting with a brightly colored one over here, I can see that that's an example where you didn't fill in the double stroking. And right next to it, we're uh, working on black here with some, you know, sort of neon gel pens. And then of course that contrasts directly, of course, with what you can see here where you have filled it in. So a lot of options depending on what you feel like and the tool you're using. Really cool stuff. Thank you, Joanne.